Tonight, Alina Health tells us they will not challenge the effort to unionize by hundreds of its clinic doctors, nurse practitioners, and physician assistants. This affects dozens of Minnesota clinics. Our Renee Cooper joins us now with the new details. Renee. Kirsten, just this evening, an Alina spokesperson tells me the deadline to object was Friday, and they decided not to challenge it, meaning once the union is officially certified, bargaining can begin. Organizing healthcare workers tell me it's not personal. It's an industry-wide shift they want to see. We are the first of its kind, and they told us that from the beginning. If you can make this happen, this you'll be starting but will probably be a little bit of a tidal wave. Beth Gunnis works at Alina's Inver Grove Clinic, where more than 30 years into her career as a pediatric nurse practitioner, she's adding union organizer to her resume, working to form what is poised to become the largest private sector doctor's union in the country. This is a tidal wave, she's exactly right. Dr. Francis Cui is the president of the Doctors' Council based in New York. And while the union has been around for decades, she says a shift to heavier handed health care administration, starting with the pandemic, has increased interest in union membership. The employers just look at productivity. How many patients did you see today? How many patients on your schedule? But there are a lot of other things that encompass how we see those patients. And it really does affect people's care. These feelings are not unique. Gunnis is now a part of the second group of doctors ever in Minnesota to vote to join the Doctors' Council. The first effort also came from Alina doctors in March at its Mercy Hospital in Coon Rapids. This is something that Alina is actively challenging. We couldn't get details because it's an active labor dispute, but Dr. Kui did say this latest effort by clinic staff would be tougher to stop. Like Mercy Unity was, the, the vote was not as decisive as this vote, so they were able to challenge, but this was like a clean vote. We had over 60 clinics represented in the union membership that voted. We had over 95, over 90% 90 of the ballots returned. And I, I think, you know, if we could do that, I think they should know that we're serious. Now, Alina Health did not accept our interview request today. And while they're not challenging this effort, they have said they're disappointed in their employees' decision to unionize, adding, quote, our focus now is on moving forward to ensure the best interests of our employees, patients, and the communities we serve. In the newsroom, Brene Cooper, 5 by Witness News.